Up next is Chris Vetter. She's going to talk about CSS animation and artful storytelling. Chris is the digital production specialist for the children's publisher Learner Publishing Group, where she focuses on best practices in print and digital workflow and researches how to improve learner, Learner's digital offerings. She is also the Vice President of the Minnesota Publi Book Publishers Roundtable, a nonprofit organization that provides networking and professional development to publishing professionals. It's a great group. Um, here to present on CSS3 Animation and Artful Storytelling in Children's Books is Chris Vetter. There are a lot of different ways you can um, make animations in ebooks. There's um, CSS and JavaScript, there's CSS on its own, there's SVGs. Um, John and I were just talking about GIFs or GIFs. <laughs> um, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to talk about CSS animation with JavaScript triggering because it, um, it's more conducive to children's publishing, in my opinion. So there are pros and cons. Some of the pros are file size. So since you're not um, like embedding a video with an animation, you're just animating in the code, you'll, your file size stays very, very small, very lean, um, which makes your ebook faster to load, easier to download, et cetera. Um, we'll be using InDesign to animate, and most publishers already own InDesign, so um, you're using a skill set that already exists within your publishing company versus um, hiring a traditional anim animator, for example, to create a video. Time savings. Um, in the sense of versus a traditional animator with a video is you can do an animation in like 30 minutes in InDesign and test it and make sure it works and make sure it validates um, very quick. And cost savings because you already own the software and um, someone who already uses InDesign at your company is more than trainable um, to learn how to animate with InDesign. I only came up with one con, which is only a sort of con, which is um, your movements in your animations may not be realistic movements unless you put a lot of different um, frames into it, like a, a sprite, like um, I think Derek or Nick mentioned yesterday in the workshop. So can I animate it? There are some prerequisites to animating with CSS and JavaScript. First of all, your images, as a best practice, should be native digital files um, in stand, instead of scanned physical work. Uh, where, um, where I work at Learner, about 25% of our work, uh, of our art, is still scanned art from artists who paint or draw on paper. Um, this doesn't really work very well for animation because there's a background or because it's flattened and you can't move like a character without moving all of the artwork <laughs> together, which defeats the purpose. Um, the images should be on separate layers so they can move independently from each other. And that the images should have a transparent background, which I just said. Um, and the last one, which is a big one, is rights. So I made some samples for you guys. However, um, I went through a lot of learners' backlist and front list to find pieces of artwork that were usable um, that met all of these criteria and time and time again I emailed contracts department and we didn't have interactivity rights or we didn't have ebook e animation rights. So this is a big one. I actually had to ask some friends to make all of my artwork for me. <laughs> so <laughs> think about that. I want you guys to think about the user experience first. Don't look at a children's book and say, oh, hey, I can make this character blink his eyes, or I can make this little monster wave his hands, or something like that. Um, think about why a reader would want something to be interactive or to move. So would the animation add context? So in the case of um, Sir Isaac Newton and the gravity control, like that taught a child that is the theory of gravity. You have the words explaining it and they can actually control it and visually see how gravity works. It should assist the narrative. So for example, the reindeer were galloping across the page as a herd. The glossary term was herd. You were seeing those things in conjunction. Um, assist the age and reading level comprehension. So again, with the glossary term, um, 
or um, parsing paragraphs in or into smaller chunks. So the reading order. So in Jack and the Beanstalk, we had four different paragraphs, and they appeared and disappeared slowly and on their own, so the child would have been able to read that and understand it before moving on, and, and instead of having a very text-heavy page or using multiple pages when you could animate on that page and have it all available at once. So if you have all of those things or most of those things, I would say you are adding value to a children's book. You're increasing or you're adding context, which um, will help the child understand it. You're assisting the narrative. You're leading, uh, lending to their comprehension, and you're aiding in reading order. So let's say you have a project and you decide, I'm going to animate. <sighs> Slow down. <laughs> Be very conscious, conscience, I can't talk, conscious of your audience. So I'm specifically talking about children's ebooks here. So we've got to think reading level and age and comprehension. Who is going to be reading this book? You need to make interactions obvious, especially for a lower age group, um, as John pointed to earlier. Buttons should look like buttons. It should be very obvious. And interactive objects should prompt the user or the reader to interact with it. There should be an obvious visual cue, like the arrow that popped up and pointed to the apple, or the apple pulsing, hey, tap on me. Timing and duration are very, very important. You need to make sure that text stays on the page long enough for your reader to read it. Um, and that, yeah. And then quality over quantity, which John also touched on. Um, Let's say you want to animate an ebook, but only four out of you know, the 30 pages lend itself to animation. Do not feel required to animate on every single page just that matches in the sense that they have animation. Use it purposefully. Keep your animations lean and add in context. All right, so let's say you're going to animate. In my ideal world, high in the sky, there would be foresight, and this would not be an afterthought. So this means in children's publishing, we're planning two to three years ahead. So you need to basically start now planning if you want your book in three years <laughs> to be animated um, well. Interdepartment collaboration is very, very, very important. You need editorial, working with design, working with um, your digital department, working with authors, working with illustrators, everyone being able to work together to figure this out, in which case paper casting would come in very handy. <laughs> and storyboarding. Um, get your authors and illustrators excited. Show them a sample. Show them what is possible. And I guarantee you, you will find someone who will provide you with content in the correct way to be usable in animations. Dog fooding which was our buzzword last year. Um, show everyone in your department, show them samples, make a full book, show them what is possible so that they internalize it and they think about it as an option when they're making a print book. We should not be thinking about print and digital books as separate pieces. They are part of the same workflow and they're just giving content to the audience in whatever format they prefer. And then marketing. So, you need to show a preview sample in your retailer's store. If you don't show a sample, no one's going to know that your ebook is animated. And as well, write copy that specifies your ebook is animated in the metadata so it shows up in the store. And not just that, but tell them how it improves your reader's experience, like the gravity example. Explain that there are gravity controls so the child firsthand understands what gravity means. Tell your sales team, because if they don't know, they can't sell it. Let's say that they're um, talking to a librarian and they're talking about these books print books, and when the librarians like maybe on the fence about it, they can explain, oh hey, it also comes in digital and it's animated, and it, um, all of the glossary terms, you click on them, and an animation that corresponds happens, it adds context, it increases the user experience. 
and then blog about it, <laughs> which I personally haven't done yet, and I need to. Um, blog about your animation decision on a particular book. Why did you decide to animate this and not that? Show off that you were very purposeful in your decision-making process and that you have very pure intentions. <laughs> So uh, if you want to learn more, there's some great lynda.com videos. Uh, Diane Burns has uh, creating animations with Adobe InDesign CC. And I think Anne-Marie Concepcion touches on it a little bit in her creating fixed layout EPUBs with InDesign CC as well. There's some acknowledgments. And hashtag team puppies. <laughs> Any questions? Is there value? just from an entertainment per perspective for yeah, especially younger kids, like just thinking they'll be more engaged with a digital book if it does something rather than just words on a page? Right. Um, I would agree with that, but I would also be very hesitant to add anything that is strictly gimmicky. Like it should really have a purpose. and. Personally, I don't want to teach our children that they should always be tapping around on everything to see if it's interactive. If we're very purposeful with our interactions or make them very obvious, then the child will know whether or not they should be tapping on it or if they should just be reading straight through. I uh, just want to ask about, um, so you're talking about your principles to ensure you're adding value, which is great. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if, if your <clears throat> job involves tracking like once you finished a book, did you add value, you know, can you track um, sales, do you do user testing, do you get feedback, do you have any way of like confirming the thing that you're pretty sure of, which is like we, you know, made responsible choices, made this book better for users? Right. Um, I'm still in the process of convincing my publisher to actually let us do this. So no, we do not have any current data, although I would love to get data. Um, I know we track our sales in all of our different retailers, so we would be able to tell. Um, obviously, this would only be available through iBooks and Kobo iOS and Android, so those would be the two markets we would have to track versus I would definitely recommend making a regular version, like a, just a fixed layout regular version of the print version so it's more accessible because obviously interactivity isn't. Um, and then compare the two against each other sales-wise. Obviously channels are going to affect that, but you can look from past sales to get that. 